Hello and welcome to the Sysadmin Tutorials YouTube channel. Today we are going to be taking you through an upgrade of the vCenter server appliance. I will be showing you how to successfully upgrade vCSA from 6.0 to 6.5. There are two stages to the upgrade process. Number one, deploy a new vCSA 6.5 appliance. And number two, copy the existing settings from your previous vCSA 6.0 to 6.5. Let's jump right in and get started. Before we make any changes to our existing VCSA 6.0 appliance, we will need to take a snapshot backup. To take a snapshot of my existing vCenter server appliance, I'm going to log into the web client. Once I've logged into my web client, I'm going to click on hosts and clusters. I'm going to click on my management resource pool. And then I'm going to look for my vCenter 6 appliance. On the summary tab, we can see that the vCenter appliance is running on my ESXi host called vmhost2.vmlab.local. So I'm going to open up the vSphere client and make a direct connection to this ESXi host. I've entered in all my credentials, so I'll click on login. I'll accept the certificate. And I'll expand my vmhost2, expand management resource pool. And here I can see my VM vCenter 6 appliance. I'm going to right click on it, select power, and then shut down guest. Now that our virtual machine is shut down, we're going to right click on it, select snapshot, take snapshot, and we'll just give our snapshot a name. Once we've given it a name, we'll click OK. The snapshot has been taken, so we can now proceed to power on the virtual machine once again. After a few minutes, our vCenter server will be started. Just to verify, let's open up the console of the virtual machine. And we can see here that the appliance has started successfully. I'll close the console. Next, I'm going to be mounting my vCSA 6.5 ISO file. This is the build version that I'm using. And if I right click on the ISO file and select mount, you can see that the ISO file has now been mounted to one of my DVD drive letters. Before we run the upgrade installer, we need to run the migration assistant on our update manager server. The update manager server that I have running in my lab is purely a Windows 2012 R2 server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this migration assistant folder across to my update manager server. Within my update manager server, I'm going to be pasting the files into my C drive. Once the copy is complete, I'm going to open up a command prompt and I'll make sure I'll run as administrator. I'll then browse to the C drive in the migration assistant folder. Within the folder, I'm going to run VMware migration assistant.exe. The Migration Assistant is then going to ask me for the user account that Update Manager uses to connect through to vCenter. So I'll enter in that password here. As you can see on screen, the migration will consist of consolidating Update Manager into the vCenter Server Appliance 6.5. Update Manager can only be consolidated into the vCSA Appliance from version 6.5, which a lot of people are very excited about especially since you don't need an additional Windows server to run Update Manager now. The script has let us know that it's waiting for the migration to start. So with that being said, I'm going to minimize the Update Manager remote desktop. And now we're back at the mounted vCSA 6.5 ISO file. We're now going to double click on the vCSA UI installer folder, followed by Win32, and lastly installer.exe. The vCenter Server Appliance 6.5 installer has four options. Install, Upgrade, Migrate and Restore. We're going to be selecting Upgrade. And in the first window here, it explains that this is a two-stage process. Stage number one will deploy a new vCenter 6.5 appliance. And stage number two will concentrate on copying the existing vCSA 6.0 configuration across to the new vCSA 6.5. So we'll click Next. 
and we'll accept the end user license agreement. It now asks us for our source appliance information. I'm going to be typing in the fully qualified domain name of my current vCenter server 6.0. And for my SSO username, which is administrator at vSphere.local, I'll be typing in the password. And lastly, for the source appliance, we'll also type in the root appliance OS password. As we saw previously, our vCenter server is running on an ESXi host called vmhost2.vmlab.local. So I'm going to enter in that information in this next field. And for my ESXi username, I'll type in root and the root password. We'll now move on to step number four. And we'll accept the ESXi host certificate. In step number four, it asks us where we wish to deploy our VCSA 6.5 appliance. I will be deploying it into the same ESXi host called vmhost2. So I'm going to type in the fully qualified domain name here, along with the root username and password, and we'll click next. Again, we'll accept the vmhost2 ESXi certificate. In step number five, it asks us what we would like the virtual machine name to be. I'm going to type in VM vCenter 65 and it asks us for the root appliance password. This is a new password, so I'm going to enter in that now and we'll confirm that password in the next line. Step number six asks us to select the deployment size of our VCSA appliance. We can select between tiny, small, medium, large and extra large. Changing the deployment size also increases the amount of vCPU, memory and storage requirements. As you can see on the right hand side, increasing the deployment size also increases the amount of hosts and virtual machines that are supported. As this is a lab environment, I'm going to be selecting the tiny deployment size and I'll click next here. Next, I'll select the data store where I'll be deploying the VCSA appliance. That data store is Synology 1815-NFS1 and I'll click next. In step number eight, it asks us which network we want our VCSA appliance to belong to. My network is called Home Lab Internal, and it also asks us for some temporary network settings. The temporary network settings are used to copy across the existing configuration, and once the copy is complete, the temporary network settings are removed, and the original source IP from VCSA 6.0 is applied to our VCSA 6.5 appliance. My temporary IP address is going to be 192.168.1.18. My subnet mask is slash 24. And my default gateway is 192.168.1.1. Lastly, my DNS server is 192.168.1.101. And now I'll click next. And this brings us up to step number nine, which displays a summary of all our settings. If you need to make any changes, click the back button. If you are happy with all your settings, click finish to begin the VCSA 6.5 deployment. The VCSA 6.5 appliance has now been deployed. That completes stage number one of the upgrade process. We can now move on to stage two by clicking continue. Stage number two is broken up into five parts and it just highlights down the bottom the data will be copied from the source VCSA 6.0 appliance across to the new VCSA 6.5. So we'll click next. A few pre-upgrade checks have been highlighted. Firstly, if you have your ESXi hosts within a cluster, the DRS automation level should not be set to fully automated. Second, any files that cannot be used with Update Manager 6.5 will not be copied across for Update Manager 6.0. Let's change our cluster DRS level to manual now. To do that, we'll go back to the vSphere web client. We'll select our cluster. We'll make sure we're on the Manage tab, Settings, and vSphere DRS. And as we can see on the right-hand side, the DRS automation level is set to Fully Automated. To change that, we'll click on Edit. And for the DRS automation level, we'll drop down the menu and select Manual. And we'll click OK. We will then return to our upgrade and we'll click close. You have three options to select from as to which data you want to copy across from the source VCSA appliance. The first one is purely configuration. Second, configuration events and tasks. 
and thirdly, configuration, events, tasks, and performance metrics. For this demonstration, I'm only going to be selecting configuration, and we'll click next. I'm going to untick the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program, and click next. And again, we have a summary of our settings displayed on screen. I will click this box here that verifies we have taken a backup of the source vCenter server and the required database. And we'll go ahead and click finish. We are presented with a warning that the source vCenter will be shut down once the network configuration is enabled on the destination vCenter server. We'll click OK to that. And we can now see that the data is being copied across from the source vCenter server to the target vCenter server. If I go to our Update Manager remote desktop session that we had opened previously, we can see that the script is busy exporting data. I'll return back to the upgrade status and we'll continue to watch this progress. Okay, all three steps of the upgrade have completed successfully. I'm going to go ahead and click on close. And in the background here, you can see that our browser has opened up a new tab that's directed us to the VCSA 6.5 appliance. Before we jump into the web client and have a look at the new vSphere client running in HTML5, I'll just go back to the vSphere client that's currently connected to the ESXi host called VM Host 2. In here, we can see that our VM vCenter 6.0 appliance has now been shut down and our VM vCenter 6.5 appliance is now powered on. I'm going to minimize the old vSphere client and we're first going to have a look at the vSphere web client. At the single sign-on, I will enter in my username and password and we're now logged into our vSphere 6.5 web client. To verify that we are running 6.5, I'm going to click on the summary tab and we can see here under version information that the version is indeed 6.5.0. You're also going to see with version 6.5 is that the Update Manager tab is now included in the vSphere web client. And of course, if we revisit our upgrade steps, we did also migrate our Update Manager from Windows Server across to the vCSA 6.5 appliance. So now Update Manager is running within vCSA. From this point, you can go ahead and decommission the previous Update Manager server running on Windows. If we expand our VMLab Site 1 data center, and then expand our cluster. We can see under the management resource pool that we have our VM vCenter 6.5 appliance virtual machine. Now we'll switch back to the vSphere 6.5 getting started page and we'll take a look at the vSphere client running HTML5. The HTML5 interface it does not have all the functionality of the original vSphere web client. However, I'm guessing as more updates do come out, those functions will be slowly introduced to the HTML5 web interface. One tab that you can see is missing from this page is the Update Manager tab. But if we expand our VMLab Site 1 and our cluster and also our Management Resource Pool, we can see our list of virtual machines and once again we can see our VM vCenter 6.5 appliance. There is one more web interface that I'd like to show you and that is the administration site to the appliance itself. If we type in HTTPS along with our vCenter fully qualified domain name and colon 5480, it will take us to the appliance web interface. We'll go ahead and accept the certificate. And in the appliance management, we're going to type the username root, followed by the password that we entered in during the migration phase. Within this website, we can administer the appliance itself by setting such things as SSH access, networking, time, updates, administration, logging, and we can also see resources of the appliance. For a complete walkthrough of the vCenter server appliance admin site, you can refer to my video called vSphere 6.5, how to install and configure the VMware vCenter 6.5 appliance. I'll post the link at the end of this video. That now completes this walkthrough of upgrading vCenter server appliance 6.0 to vCSA 6.5. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you again in the next video.